We've already built some individual pages for our lesson, so now we're going to create some elements that are the same across every page. We're going to add some forward and back buttons, as well as some pop-up resources, like a menu and a help resource. Since we want to build these once and have them accessible from every page, we'll want to use masters. We'll also be using a template as a starting place to save us some time. Masters are essentially pages that exist alongside the regular pages. Similar to masters in PowerPoint, whatever we put on the master is accessible from other pages. That makes it a perfect place for things like user interfaces or lesson level resources like a menu. We wouldn't want to have to build a menu on every single page. In order to customize our master, we'll go over here to the pages panel and switch from flow to masters. There's already a master one here. We could build shapes, text, and buttons on here, as well as the actions to power them. So if we put a shape here in the top left hand corner, and then go back to the flow, we would see that on page one, page two, and page three. So we'll go back to our master, and in this case, we're not going to use this master, but instead apply a template to save some time. So I'll come up to the template menu item and choose apply template. When I'm here on the masters tab, I'll be restricted to only seeing the master templates. If I want to, I can check out some of these different templates that are available and use the thumbnails or the preview to see how they look. In this case, I'll use the small buttons template. So I'll come over here to the new master from template. And I will choose to apply this master to all pages. So I'll check that checkbox and then leave it on on top. And then just click OK. So this has created a new master in addition to my original master, and it's added all the objects, layers, and actions that I need for this template to work. Since I no longer need the original master, I can come down here and select it, right click, and choose Delete Master. I'll get a warning that this master is used on all the pages of my lesson, but in this case, I know I want to delete the original master. Now I can start customizing this template. I'm not really using blue in my lesson, so I'll change these colors to green. I'll select this top bar, which is a shape object, and in the properties panel, I'll choose fill, and in the color property, I can choose from one of these. Or if I have a particular color code, I can paste that in here. In this case, I'll use this green. Next, I'll change the buttons. In this case, I'll select all of them by clicking on one, and then holding down the shift key on my keyboard and selecting the rest. Note that when you select items on the master, they have red drag handles. We'll see why that is later. Once I have them all selected, I'll come up to any of their style icons and click on that. And I think I use this green style on page three. So I'll select it, see what it looks like. And if I'm happy, I'll click OK. Let's look at some of the other things that come along with the master. I have the base layer, which has the top bar, shape, and buttons, as well as a few other items that have been placed off stage. I also have these other layers, a menu, resources, help, and the bookmark layer. All of these are already working with the template actions down here. In my case, I don't really have any resources, 
so I'll remove it. I could delete the Resources button and the Resources layer, but in case I change my mind later, it's easier just to move the button off screen. So I'll scroll up and just move this up here. And if the learner can't see the button, they can't click on it, and they'll never see the resources layer. The menu and the bookmark layers are pretty much ready to go, so I'll leave those alone. But for my help layer, I can paste in some text from the project files document. So I'll double click on this text to edit it, and then paste in my text using Control V. Next, I'm going to add some of these other items onto my master. So I will drag a selection marquee around these two buttons and move them in order to make a little room. Then I'll select this text and move it down into here. I'll also make this text bold. So I'll come up to the text toolbar, select bold, and I'll change the color of the text from black to this green color. I also want to use a page title text, but in my case, not the lesson title. So I'll select the page title, move it down, and I'll make it bigger, bold, and that same green color. I can also move the object using my arrow keys. If that moves it too much at a time, I can hold down control with my arrow keys to move it one pixel at a time. Both of these text objects are set dynamically as the pages change, so I don't need to worry about what they say here. Now let's preview. If I preview from here, I will only see the master all by itself. Sometimes that is useful, but in my case, I want to see what it looks like with the context of the other pages. So I'll come back down to the Pages tab and choose Flow. I'll select page 1, and then Preview from here. My Next and Back buttons work pretty well, as do the page numbers and the page title, and my help, and menu. But I did forget to change the color of these backgrounds to green, so let's go fix it. I'll close the preview, return to the masters, and I'll find them here in my layers. So I'll start with the menu layer, We'll select the header shape, and I'll come over to the fill property, and choose this same green that I've been using. I also need to change this background line color to that same green. And my button style, so I'll select it, choose the style icon, and choose green. Then I'll repeat that for the other layers. Now let's preview again. Since I've already previewed from page 1 once, I can use this drop down next to the preview icon and choose page 1.
that will bring me to page 1 and preview from there. My resources look a lot better, but these page names aren't that useful. So let's update them. I'll close the preview window, come down here to my flow, and I can select the page, and then double click to change the name. And I'll select the next page, and do the same thing. And again for the third. Now that I look at my page title, I do notice that it's pretty far to the left. I can't select anything from the master here on the page, otherwise I'd be clicking on them accidentally all the time. But rather than returning to the master, I can find it here in the cast. So I'll select the master, select the base layer, and then select the object. Again, notice that any objects on the master have red drag handles. So from here, I can just unlock it using this lock unlock icon. And now I can move it over to the right. Note that when I'm doing this, I'm changing the master. So this will update across all my pages. To return to my page, I can just simply select something on the page. Finally, I notice that this bookmark is making it really hard to see what's going on on my regular page. So I will return to the master, and in my cast, I will hide that bookmark layer. Now when I return to a regular page of my flow, I can see my top bar, but my pop-up resources don't get in the way. And with that, we're done with our master. So we'll save our lesson, and in the next video, we'll add some quiz questions and results to our lesson. To do this quickly, we'll be using templates again.